Good morning, church. For our time of prayer, what we're going to do today is something that has been done throughout the centuries. It's a method of reading scripture that is reading it prayerfully and thoughtfully. What you do is you take a passage of scripture and you read it slowly three times. The first time, usually what happens is there's a little bit that's fresh to you. It's a little bit that's familiar to you. You hear the words and they kind of, you know, they, they hit your ear. You know, you've heard it all before, but you're only paying half attention. The second time, usually what happens, at least in my experience, is that you begin to get bored. You know, you, you've just heard those words. And the second time, it's like, okay, I, I just heard this. I really don't need to hear it again. But usually what will happen is in the midst of your own boredom, one or two concepts will pop out. And you'll be like, oh, I hadn't really thought of that before. Okay, so I got something interesting. And then the third time, generally something interesting happens. The third time you begin recognizing that you were already bored, that was the last time, and the first time, well, you know, that was when it was familiar. And so the third time your heart begins to engage and says, there's got to be something here. And I find that during that time, there might be a whisper or two of God speaking into your heart through these words. And maybe he'll reveal something to you that he needs to. I'm choosing a passage that I read this morning. And so therefore, I, I didn't dig through the Bible just to find one particular passage that I thought was perfect. But this is one passage that struck me as being relevant to us. And it's a passage that I've heard many times, and maybe you have too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to pause. And I invite you in the space of the pause to pray, to ask for God's insight. And then I'll read it again, and I'll pause. And then I'll read it again, and I'll pause. And most of the mornings that I do this, I end our time with prayer. Today I'm not going to do that. I want you to continue that prayer. And so the third time when I read it, I'll pause, and then I'll fade out the video, and I'll just leave it quiet for five minutes or so. YouTube won't, shouldn't, play you any ads or, or roll on to the next video. And in that space of silence, I want you to spend some time with God and say, God, what does this mean for me? What do you have to say to me today? So here we go. It's going to be in Romans, but I don't want you to read it. Romans chapter 10, I'm going to start reading it in the middle of verse 8. I don't want you to read it. I don't even really care if you look at me uh, while I read it. I want you to hear it with your heart, maybe even just close your eyes. God, would you speak to us? Through your word, we pray. The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent, just as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things.
the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then? Will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. 